I am not a fan of subsidies or I don't really subscribe to subsidies being the vehicle or the only vehicle to introduce technology. Bajaj Auto and KTM have launched the one millionth KTM from Bajaj Auto's Chakan plant where we are currently. Both companies have pledged that the next one million will come much faster. With us right now is the Managing Director of Bajaj Auto, Rajiv Bajaj. Rajiv Bajaj, thank you very much for joining us. Thank Give you. us a sense of how important has this partnership been for Bajaj Auto for where it is today. Thank you, Parikshit. Yeah, it's a great day for us. Uh, you know, we started with KTM in 2007, so it's been 16 years. Uh, my mind goes back to what KTM was then and where Bajaj was then. KTM was a company that made about uh, 65,000 motorcycles a year. Um, and I think now they are uh, closing in on 400,000 motorcycles a year. Uh, and a very large uh, proportion of that have come out of this partnership, which means designed, developed, made and sold out of India. Uh, so that's how big uh, this partnership has been for KTM. KTM has gone on, uh, I would say, uh, to a large measure on the uh, you know, virtue of this partnership to now become not just um, the largest motorcycle maker in Europe uh, in the premium segment, uh, but the uh, number one premium motorcycle maker in the world. Right. Uh, I would now like to ask you about the future of the partnership going forward. How many more products or what are the kind of products that we will see uh, through KTM, through Husqvarna in India this year, in the premium play, in bigger bikes, in electric mobility? Well, actually, you've kind of answered the question. Uh, I'm obviously not at liberty to uh, say anything very specific. But A, uh, for sure, in the next, over the next two to three years, the entire current lineup uh, of uh, the KTMs here, that is the Duke, the RC, the Adventure, uh, will all be very significantly uh, upgraded. Uh, so there's lots of new stuff that's uh, on the drawing board or in development right now. Uh, secondly, as uh, Stefan elaborated earlier today, uh, he is open to the idea of bringing bigger KTMs to to this market and from this market to other markets in the world. So I think uh, that looks uh, very likely in the near term, I would say. Uh, Husqvarna, as the second important brand in the stable, is uh, already here. Of course, it is uh, several years behind KTM uh, in the Indian market, so it is still taking time to build. Uh, but I have seen the new Husqvarnas and uh, they are absolutely beautiful. In fact, if I may say so, uh, I. I like them more than I like the KTMs. Uh, so, so that's something I'm looking forward to. Um, recently, as you are aware, KTM has been involved with Gas Gas, has acquired Gas Gas, and is now uh, you know, involved uh, with MV, MV Agusta. So there are no specific plans right now for uh, these two brands as far as uh, Bajaj KTM is concerned. But who knows, you know, I mean, uh, uh, this is all available to us and therefore to our customers. Finally, on electric mobility, uh, it's no secret that we are working together to develop uh, electric powertrains for the future. So, uh, really, we are working uh, on, on all those aspects that you mentioned. Right. Uh, we spoke to uh, Stefan Pierre a short while back. He pointed out that this year, at least the second half, could be challenging because of the possibility of a mild recession in Europe. Exports for you have also seen a dip, and that's probably bringing down sales because of the global headwinds. How do you think uh, this calendar year, the upcoming fiscal, is going to be for you? Okay. So on exports, yes. Uh, let me put some numbers on that. Uh, you know, exports is about half of uh, our business, so very significant for us. Uh, typically, we were at uh, 200,000 vehicles a month, motorcycles and three-wheelers put together. Uh, in recent months, it's more like 140,000. Uh, so, you know, uh, we are down about 30%, you could say. Um, and it's not just us, that's uh, across industry. Um, if I may add a detail to that, we are particularly affected uh, because two of our biggest markets, Nigeria for motorcycles uh, and Egypt for three-wheelers, uh, are hugely impacted. Nigeria is down more than half, and Egypt, uh, for the moment, is not permitting uh, the import of three-wheelers. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, that's taken a big hit. Having said that, if you look at the last quarter, uh, that is the second quarter for which results were already declared in October, I think we recorded our highest revenues mm -hmm. 
and our highest bottom line ever, uh, if I'm not wrong. So we have managed to, uh, you know, compensate for this in other overseas markets and also out of the domestic market. Now, obviously, to sitting here today, I'm not at liberty to comment on the third quarter results, uh, but I'm very hopeful uh, that, of course, every quarter cannot be a record quarter, but I'm very hopeful that uh, due to a combination of things in our control and some outside of our control, um, uh, you know, we will continue to uh, put out uh, some pretty good performance. Uh, you know, when I say outside our control, just to finish this answer, I mean that, uh, you know, the Forex has played a very important role, obviously, uh, in our bottom line. So sometimes I tell our people that uh, uh, the, the performance of Bajaj Auto depends less on its MD and more on uh, the RBI governor. There's lots of uh, headlines and a lot of action on the EV front as far as Bajaj Auto goes. Uh, so what we have been picking up, that there will be at least two products for Yulu uh, that are set to be launched. Uh, several products in the Chetak segment, you're telling us about an electric three-wheeler as well. Uh, so Mr. Bajaj, could you give us uh, a sense of how these products will cater to different markets? Sure. Um, I mean, as far as Yulu is concerned, it's no secret that they address the shared mobility space, uh, both in terms of personal mobility and also in terms of delivery now. So uh, there will definitely be more than one product, let me put it like that, uh, as far as Yulu is concerned. Uh, on Chetak, I think um, what is the most positive, uh, what we hear, is that people feel both as a brand and as a product. Um, uh, Chetak is, uh, uh, they believe, an extraordinary product. In fact, I can share with you, uh, a few days ago I met Mr. Ghadkari and he complimented me, uh, as he did Sudarshan uh, for the iCube, saying that these are two outstanding scooters coming out of two Indian companies. Uh, so that's what we hear about the Chetak. Uh, on the downside, if I may call it that, uh, we also have feedback that um, the Chetak is probably, uh, you know, a little more expensive than it ought to be. Um, and, uh, you know, f quite frankly, although there is not much we can do about it, but in order to, you know, on the one hand, make it even better, uh, there will be something. And also to make it more affordable, there will be something. So there will be more than one thing on the Chetak. As far as the three-wheeler is concerned, again, um, it's a... Uh, uh, twin-pronged approach. Uh, we will have something in the passenger space and something in the goods carrying space. So really products across all of these segments. Now in terms of subsidies, this is a big debate right now within the industry. There's a, this is a source of worry about whether subsidies will continue after 31st March next year. There is a clamor to continue subsidies till the next, uh, till, till the next 10 years in order to grow the EV industry. What's your view on that? Can the EV ecosystem continue to take off without subsidies? Well, Parikshit, I'd like to give you a little longer answer to this uh, because it's not a simple yes or no. See, first let me say, I have been here now at Bajaj for 33 years. A lot of new technology has come into the marketplace in 33 years. I mean, engines have gone from being simple, two-stroke, air-cooled, um, duds really to being four stroke, four valve, dual overhead cam, fuel injected, water cooled, liquid cooled, whatever. You know? Look at suspensions, look at brakes, look at, look at lamps, look at connectivity. I mean, so much technology has come in, uh, in in the last 33 years. Did any of this technology have to be subsidized uh, by the government? To the best of my knowledge, no. I mean, we've gone from BS nothing to BS six. Uh, and Euro 5, uh, you know, uh, was there any subsidy? There was nothing, uh, you know. So in principle, when I say that I am not a fan of subsidies, I mean, I can't say I'm against subsidies, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a manufacturer who benefits from it. But I'm not a fan of subsidies or I don't really subscribe to subsidies being the vehicle or the only vehicle to introduce technology because 33 years of experience doesn't suggest that that needs to be the case. Technology is developed by manufacturers in, uh, you know, in an inside-out uh, spirit of their desire to excel. You know, it's not in response to consumer demand. What does the consumer know till we show it to him? You know, so first and for foremost, I would like to say that. EV technology, like any, must come from an inside-out passion, ambition, whatever. Number two, now to be a little more practical, when we sell a Chetak for one and a half lakhs of rupees, it is post a subsidy of almost a lakh of rupees, you know, between fame 
because that's not the only subsidy. Then there is a state level subsidy in many states, which is not insignificant. And then you know there is the GST differential. Now, if overnight all vehicles were to become EV, do you think the government is going to sit pretty at 5% GST? I don't think so, you know. Uh, so, if you put it all together, it's a lack of rupees. So, we must all understand that as an uh, auto industry, that this is huge. You know, it's like a patient uh, on a huge life support system almost, you know. Um, and it can't go on forever. Uh, so this is the second point I would make. Now, in terms of when is the right time uh, to uh, start either uh, weaning us off this life support and at what rate should that be done, frankly, it's not for me to say. You know, That's for the ministry to say, the minister to say. Um, I would only say that the important thing is to have absolute clarity on this. You know, Because sometimes, unfortunately, uh, decisions are taken which are sometimes retrospective, sometimes just with a three months notice, sometimes even with one year's notice. But one year's notice would not be sufficient, uh, you know. So now whether it should be 24 or 30 or something in between, I cannot say. But there should be enough um, uh, notice to industry and the decision should be very clear, very uh, stable, very firm. If this fame subsidy is lifted, that could immediately add a 40,000 cost. 40, 45,000 to our scooter at least. Our, to, electric, uh, to electric scooters and that probably could disrupt the market. Oh, it is bound to because we are talking of a 30% increase in price uh, for scooters like ours. Uh, and then with that, if the states also decide to take a step back, if GST, let's say, moves from 5 to 12 or 18%, um, I mean, uh, you know, that's going to have a huge impact. I would also like to ask you about the budget. Uh, the budget is around the corner. Give us a sense of the kind of regulatory hurdles or cost burdens that you have in the industry right now, which you see is as resisting the growth that the company could see. And what could the budget really achieve for it? And what would some of your recommendations be? <laughs> I have always said, Parikshit, that in all these years, I have never watched the budget. I know as much about the budget as the FM knows about uh, engineering. But I will say this, that uh, as we just said, there's been a lot of cost pressures uh, coming from inflation, whether it's fuel inflation, uh, commodity inflation, um, you know, the uh, containers and shipping inflation, all of that. And there's been regulatory pressures. So, I mean, I think what could be important is uh, perhaps uh, two, three things. One is uh, as much as IC engines are um, at 28% uh, GST, and the EV industry is at 5%. I think there is a case here for CNG as a near clean fuel. It's a near clean fuel. And I think the government has done a fantastic job in the last few years of expanding the CNG network. We won't go into that detail, but a huge section of the diesel three-wheeler industry, for example, and it's happened in cars, etc. also, has moved to CNG. I think this is great. Um, okay, it doesn't reduce the import bill, but it makes the air cleaner. It's uh, great for the OPEX, uh, for the driver or uh, the owner, etc. So I think I would definitely make a strong plea uh, for CNG vehicles, you know, to be like at 18% or something like this, uh, I think this would be, uh, I think, a good idea, even if the government cannot reduce GST across. Um, and uh, on electric vehicles, I would try to give the subsidy a little different color by saying that instead of putting thousands of crores at the disposal of manufacturers, why don't we uh, spend that money, as in why doesn't the government spend that money? in creating a environment that is more conducive to the adoption of electric vehicles. Because for sure, whether it's in terms of creating lanes uh, for low-speed vehicles, cyclists, pedestrians, etc., and hence for electric vehicles, uh, lighter, smaller vehicles, uh, as has been done in China and is being done in different cities of the world, or in terms of charging infrastructure, uh, I think this is where the investment should go, you know. I mean, if I may quote Rumi who said, if the flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment not to flower, you know. So uh, the flower will bloom, uh, as in the EV will take off, if we fix the environment for it. And quite frankly, I mean, I don't want to again appear like a martyr here, but, uh, you know, Bajaj Auto doesn't need a few hundred crores or government subsidy uh, to move its EV plans forward. 
uh, we are a profitable company, uh, we are an ambitious company, uh, we are a com progressive company, I would like to believe. We will uh, do that ourselves. Please create at least in the top 40 cities, which are the so-called 1 million plus uh, cities of this country, please create the right uh, ecosystem, uh, you know, which will inspire consumers and give them confidence uh, to adopt uh, electric vehicles. Right. Uh, Mr. Pajaj, on, on the Chetak, uh, give us a sense of how you would like to ramp up production. You've said this uh, several times earlier as well, that... Uh, that this is this is a issue that you have been facing uh, on the supply end. You've been trying to correct it. How will this year be in terms of ramping up production, sales footprint of the Chetak? Okay. So as I said a little earlier at the um, uh, event to mark the one millionth uh, KTM from Bajaj KTM, we didn't start with that goal 16 years back. You know, um, we didn't focus on the result. We focused on the cause. Great technology great quality and productivity, um, you know, uh, great uh, distribution. Uh, this is, uh, uh, our desire was to excel on these fronts. The result became 1 million KTMs out of India. So right now, uh, I'm a little shy to put any quantitative uh, targets onto Chetak. I can tell you uh, that uh, the plant that we are still in the process of just completing at Akudi will have a capacity of half a million vehicles. Uh, but that's just capacity. Uh, in terms of actual production also, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but I know that uh, in the last financial year, it was a little more than 10 or a little less than 10,000. This year, we will be close to hopefully 50,000. So it looks like a 5x growth, but obviously it's on a very low base. Uh, it would be reasonable to expect that the growth will be in multiples in the coming years. And to this will be added also Yulu and, uh, and other things we do. So I think uh, the uh, quantitative uh, aspect is not the focus right now. Our focus is on getting the technology right, the quality right, getting the distribution right, because you know we have chosen to build a new distribution network for Chetak, and most importantly on getting the customer experience right, which quite frankly is a bit of a challenge for us, uh, because as an IC engine company, we don't necessarily always think about what you see on the, uh, the speedometer, you know, so connectivity and stuff like that. Uh, so this is the more important aspect uh, that we are focused on. My final two questions, thank you so much for your time, but you, you've said this in the past that Chetak Electric Mobility has been launched. When it comes to electric vehicles, the company will have to reinvent itself. You've got, an, you've got Urbanite, which is looking at your electric vehicle business, and you've got Chetak, Chetak Electric Mobility. How is the company evolving itself? Uh, how will Chetak Electric Mobility grow as a separate business? What about electric motorcycles? Will there be more electric companies within the Bajaj Group? Yeah. You know, I consider uh, uh, Al Ries, the marketing strategist, as a kind of marketing guru. And he said, the job of the CEO is to find the future in the current activities. I think we are, that is what we are doing with Chetak Technologies Limited. We are acknowledging that, you know, this is a new world um, in every respect and every aspect. And that's why we have created a new entity there. Um, and in that entity will also uh, move uh, the urbanite business. Uh, so that will not remain in, in Bajaj. So Chetak, which is part of the urbanite business, and that may house more than just the Chetak brand tomorrow. It could. Not that we have anything on mind uh, at this moment. So all of this will move there. Uh, and so also the R&D for the electric powertrain. Um, uh, some people already moved there. And the new um, uh, numbers that we are adding, the new recruitment, is all happening there. So Chetak Technologies Limited will have its own CEO, its own CTO, its own operations. The Akudi plant becomes part of Chetak Technologies Limited. Um, and it will have its own R&D, um, and it will have its own marketing and sales, i.e. the urbanite business unit. So it will uh, you know, be complete uh, in all respects. And uh, that is how uh, we would like to grow it. In the present Bajaj Auto uh, would remain uh, our motorcycles uh, uh, and our three-wheelers and, of course, the cute, the quadricycle. And quite frankly, uh, we do not have, again, the luxury of choosing one or the other, you know. Uh, on the one hand, we have a very, very robust uh, existing business. Uh, we are the world's most valuable two-wheeler company. So, you know, uh, uh, unlike a startup which has nothing to lose because they have nothing. Uh, we have something very valuable here um, that we must not only keep growing, uh, but also leverage for its skill sets, for its cost structure, 
to strengthen the new company. And at the same time, we need to invest in the future. You know, um, we made the transition from a scooter to a motorcycle company. Uh, this is uh, uh, 2.0, where we have to now move on from IC engine uh, to the EV world. Uh, so we've, we've done it before. So I think we can do it again. And finally, you've said uh, about a year ago that the company will have to reinvent itself all the way to the board level. How do you see your own role evolving as uh, as the company transitions towards electric mobility? Well, uh, I think the most important aspect of my job, Parikshit, is uh, what I like to call in one word, direction. You know, And what that means is uh, not just to say where we should go and what we should do, uh, which of course is not just my decision, uh, it's the team's decision, but the more important aspect is where we should not go and what should we not do. You know, I always remind uh, myself that uh, Steve Jobs is supposed to have said that when I had 10 options before me, I chose one uh, to focus on, not because the other nine were not worthy, they were all attractive. That's when, uh, you know, if nine are not attractive, it's an easy decision. It's when all 10 are attractive uh, that you have to really then, um, you know, think contraintuitively and place your bets on one thing uh, and move forward in that direction. I think that has always been my job, you know. Uh, I think that is the basis on which we narrowed our focus from scooters to motorcycles, from the uh, Indian market to the global market. By all counts, it has done well for us. Uh, and I think, uh, if I may say so, I need to play the same role as far as the EV is also concerned, not only what to do, but also what not to do. Because, you know, like this issue of subsidies you raised, I mean, we have to take responsibility not just for ourselves, but the investments that our dealers and suppliers are making across the supply chain. And we have to be sure that we are building a sustainable technology on a sustainable business model, uh, you know. Uh, so the, I think that is my job, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do it. Thank you so much for talking to us, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.